Oh, well, nice. well we got there. Got there. We're going to open the curtains now, get some better lighting in. So, how are you doing, me lovely? Well, um, I had a terrible fright yesterday, Anne, from the hospital. Mm. I went to the hospital to have check my MRI scan because I have curved of the spine. And uh, they said, "How? what do I call you? Just call me Anne. I know, but no, I mean, that's Oh, what you, me. I get you, yeah. I get you, yeah. I know. You know she said to you what to a call. Yeah, yeah, I saw that yeah. this morning. Yeah. And then she said, um, oh, and um, do you have any boyfriends? That was rude. I know. That was very rude. I but know no, because I saw not, but you know, I report I've 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 reported it now as well, and and mm. uh, I'm going to make it official with 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 well, um with a reprimand for now so that because there's no education on on how to to deal with any of well to, to deal with this and uh it's terrible i think what it is lauren as well is that i find i saw your video on instagram and I replied to it and i said what it tends to happen is no someone especially as a member of the lgbtqi communities for some reason that gives someone the freedom to ask the most personal questions. Now, I was brought up always, you do not ask about someone's relationships. They'll tell you if they want to tell you that they're in a relationship or not. And it's like, and, and what people get, have you ever been with a woman? It's like, look, I wouldn't, they never go to a straight person and start asking them questions like that, a straight cis person. It's just, it is rude when they do it. Very, very rude. But they think, oh, I can ask any question I want about person. As if you're in education. And this is another thing that gets up my nose as well. I put myself out there and I'll answer questions about being um, intersex. I'll educate people on that. Oh, that's much better. But what I'll do is I say to them, but don't look at me as being here to educate you all the time. You know that you can ask the most personal questions because you can't. So did so you put in a complaint about that? Well, it's never happened to me, Anne, and I, I, I don't think it should ever be said to anyone. Yeah. No, it shouldn't. We are alive, but there's a signal problem. Yeah, we can hear you though, and that's the main thing, Lauren. We can definitely hear you, but um. Here we are. Well, that's the main thing. Yeah, it's it is rude when people do it. See, Kelsey, this is what I'm saying. Straight cis no, people don't I, get asked. I, I, I not rude. It's unacceptable. Yeah, it's unacceptable. Yeah. Um, I don't put up mm. with things like that. You no, know, I was 18 when I had my gender reassignment surgery, and I didn't expect to be. I when she went to talk to my GP. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I'm a, I'm 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 here for the cause, um, and not to be a victim. I've been a victim yeah. too many times in my life, and I'm not going to be a victim to somebody. I'm paying money to help me with the mm. NHS. Yeah, my yeah. own GP wouldn't ask me. I mean, I was in shock. Yeah. I know um... why I went. You know, and why you have I have no makeup on. Which is the once in a lifetime. Well, Lauren, you're lucky I haven't got any on because if I didn't have it on, you'd get a fright. You'd get a real fright, I'm telling you. I have to literally slap the old stage um, makeup on to look any way decent. But you look fine. You look absolutely fine. So um, people have been excited. They have been wanting to... Um, watch this live you know and talk to you now i'll just explain to people i approach lauren and the reason i approach lauren up to talk to her is because i've watched lauren's life in the public since she was 10 and the um teddy wogan interview that was the first time and kept on watching and watching and i saw it unfold now and one thing that came through to me was that Lauren has been through some horrendous, horrendous bullying. I mean, horrific bullying. 
yet she's kept on going and she's kept on smiling and she's kept on laughing and it's like how does someone actually achieve that because you've got determination there haven't you a lot that you're going to be who you are you're going to do what you want and you're not going to give in to the bullies which i find absolutely amazing Looks like we've frozen. There must be signal problems going on. Yeah, on Oprah. But it looks like what you'll have to do, Lauren, is come out and try to come in again if you can. Because I think the signal is a uh, weak. So in the meantime, anyone want to ask any uh, questions of Lauren? Well, this is it, Kelsey. I mean, it's amazing because it started, the bullying started when she was a child. The bullying started then and carried on since then. I find it fascinating that she got through it and continues to get through it. More professional than this. They're normally more professional than this. Um, uh, it's all right, Lauren. Don't worry about it. You can't help us. Can't can she, be can she see you? Yeah, she certainly can. Troubles. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just saying about how. Here we are, Kelsey. Well, I'm, I'm here, and it's what does here. it say? I've followed Lauren for years. How she's not bit of. To... Oh, here we there go. There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry, Ann. That's all right. Don't worry about that's that. Power, right? I'm just made up to have you to speak to Lauren because, as no, I say, no. many, many years I've said one day I'll have to try and contact you because I think you you have had an amazing life, to, still have an amazing life. And I've never, I can honestly say, I've, and I've met some people in my time, and I've never known anyone to be so i don't know what this right way resolute because that puts like a determination in, but you will just continue you'll do you won't let anyone uh, make you hide away you won't make anyone bully you into not being who you want to be and what you want to do and i find that absolutely amazing i do so I'm just made up to have area to Thank talk you. to. Thank you, Anne. Well, I, I don't see the point of any of my experiences if I do let that happen. I don't mm. see any point in in the 30 years of being in the business. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and also, there aren't any advocates um, for transgendered people. Um, yeah. There aren't people who can actually, to, who speak out about their opinions um yeah and, and and if that's that is that's i think believe that's why i'm here mm. on on this on this dimension yeah to talk about it because um you're right and especially now because i know that i was saying to you the other day when i phoned you now because i can remember the 80s when everything looked bright and a new world we were going into where all kinds of prejudice and bigotry were going to be left behind and move forward. And I come onto YouTube and social media to talk just about being intersex, thinking, oh, the world's changed. And it was like Mike Tyson hold me down and give me a round of punches into the face. I thought it's worse. 
it's worse. And when I look at Twitter now, and these um, turf wars that are going on and all that, it's gone. It's a hundred times worse in my mind than what it was before. In the eighties, I say, especially for um, transgender people. I'm not saying that transgender people didn't go through bigotry or anything like that then, but it wasn't the intensity as now where they're trying to make out that trans people are trying to take over the world and they're trying to, to um, they're trying to corrupt children. All this business, it sounds spookily to me, like what the um, Jewish propaganda when they were going against. The Jews saying that they were dangerous and they were taking over the world and they were trying to um, own the world and run it. That's being said about um, trans women and men now, which is horrific. I think everything's being said now in regards, everything seems to be coming out of the woodwork as regards mm -hmm. the world. It's not the same world as it was a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, and I, I think we're allowed to be who we want to be and we should be accepted because it's yeah. not their life. It's your yeah. life, my life. And, the, and and if people have a problem with that, then that is their problem. And, That's uh, it. Yeah. It definitely is because um, the thing is, so I always think that what's happened as well is that because now it's self-defined, uh, people are saying that they're self-defined trans, and it's always trans women they pick on, not um, trans men as much, it's always trans women in the public, and it's like women-only spaces. See, years ago, the rule was you wouldn't be considered to be a trans woman or man unless you'd gone through reconstruction surgery, no. and you'd gone through the whole process. That's if, it. Someone still had, if a male still had their genitalia, they'd be called a lady boy. That's what they'd be called. They wouldn't be called a trans woman. No. But where the confusion has come in now, and I can understand this, it, I can really understand this, if someone is in a toilet and suddenly a big Bailey docker walks in, hasn't got any, isn't presenting as a female in any way, and wants to use that toilet. Now, I can understand if I was say um, a woman, and just let people keep on doing this. They think that I'm a um, transgender, and keep on saying and the man. I don't think I'm a woman. I only have to look in the mirror and say I'm not a woman. But um, if I was a woman in a toilet and that happened, I'd be like, oh, freak me out. But if someone like you walked in, or someone like another um, famous person, Blair White, walked in, it wouldn't be a shock. There wouldn't be any. Um, it's just that a woman doesn't expect to see a man walking in saying, no, oh, I'm a woman. No, and it, it's yeah. not fair after going through a, a very serious operation to have yeah. to, to to have anybody say, I'm a woman, and they don't have to do anything to be a woman, yeah. you know, physically. So, you know, a, a truck driver can say, oh, I'm a woman. Yeah. Um, I decided yesterday I didn't have to live as a woman for five years and have hormones and uh, and then um, uh, and then have major surgery and uh, you know and you know they, they they don't have to go through that and yet they are supposed to be called a woman it it is unfair and um, who's ever whoever I think it's what I want it's somebody who's starting that let's hope yeah. that fades away because that is unfair yeah yeah I think what is is a lot of um, it's where this genuine and genuine women are not just women, men speak up against well and have concerns about it. But the right, of course, the right wing haters have got in there like the LBG and started uh, the LGB alliance and started hijacking it and have made it a hate campaign. And that, uh, oh, what's her name? I, I know an old name. Posey Parker. Now, I said all the time when she was going on about it, uh, she was speaking up for women. I said, no, I said she's not now big, it's not just against trans women. I said she's not now big, it's against LGBTQI. And she's been called out a few times. She was given out the other day. 
about in America, two women, two lesbians were allowed to adopt a child. Now, <laughs> I'm sorry, she's shown her true colours. She's right-wing bigoted, and she just uses this as a way to get in there and start getting power, and that's what happens. So it's that's where it's all gone awry. But the majority, I'd imagine, of women, and I say the men that are concerned, they've got genuine concerns, but they're just getting... It's all getting hijacked by the I right think it's getting a bit out of control. Yeah. And well, I think it's all getting a little bit... Um, I think, basically, there was a time when gender was about gender, not sexuality. Yeah. Well. You know, I had gender reassignment surgery so that I would be seen as a woman. I didn't, or didn't, I didn't say, they didn't, I didn't think, oh, they'll call me transgender. I mm. thought they'd say, oh, Lauren, you know, she's, she's got a vagina and she's a woman. I didn't mm. think I'd ever be called anything but a woman because, you know, I, I didn't know that, I know, they would call me transgender. Why should yeah. they be called? You know, it was, they said I, they would, I, they said it's possible because you're only very slim and you could die of a heart attack by the time you're 30 or the operation might be very serious mm. and you might not go through it and you have to sign a waiver for this. And mm -hmm. I said, I don't care. I'll yeah. sign, I, you know, I will, I'll sign anything. Mm. But, um, you know, it, it's, it, it is getting a little bit, um, it, it, what we have to remember is, that it's it's a painful process, and it, and now it's everyone's taking the Michael out of it. Yeah, it is. It's going. Um, it has gone way too far the way it's carrying on. But um, let's get back to a um, no, your experience in life yourself. Now, of course, the one wonderful event that you had was you went over to America on the Oprah Winfrey show. And I've always wanted to know what was that experience like actually going on there um, as a 13 year old as well. I mean, that is mega time, isn't it? Well, it was, um, it was, uh, it, it was, it, well, it was a very interesting show. And mm. um, obviously, I, I had done a few shows, but it went on the front page of the Echo, which is a Cardiff paper. And said Lauren Harry's to be in on Oprah, you know. Mm. So we went on the plane, but there was it was so packed of people. Uh, the whole the the it was we were stuck like sardines, literally. Yeah. And, uh, we went to Harper. We met Oprah, and she said, "Oh, uh, oh, Lauren, it just was <laughs> nice to see you." And I just, you know, how do much money do you make with your antiques? And I said, "Well, I'm a person." <laughs> No, I want you to tell them about your antics and how much money, how much money can you actually make from your living? Can you tell the audience, you know, my mother was yeah. like, I said, you know, it's not all about, it's all about the money in America, my dear. It's all yeah. about the money in America. And then she said, now how much would this be worth? So we did an auction on yes, the show yeah. and then there were child prodigies. And then they said, I I um I I I can I can sell I can um it was all about chap objects and it should have just been about me really I'm not yeah. going to ask it but you'll find out why what happened was that uh, they, this boy said oh I can feed my fish while I'm on holiday this was this supposed to be researched this right yeah. And, uh, he, and she said, and I said, oh, that's that's very interesting. So what happens if you keep bringing them? You're supposed to phone, and the the fish is going to get fed. But I said, what if it eats too much and dies? Oh, I didn't think about <laughs> that. And this is a national show. Yeah. So, you know, and it just carried on from there. And then uh, she rang us and she said, I'm so sorry, the show was a car crash, but you know, it, 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 I I do apologize. But she wore green. She had a ladder in her tights. Mm. She was a bit bigger in those days. Um, mm. And I said, oh, Oprah, you know, you do have a ladder, and I think you should have that changed before we do the next recording. Yeah. But, yeah, so it was uh, – It was, but I did find, and as I think you find a lot with America, it's very money-orientated. And as oh, a child, yeah. I found it was very money-orientated, you know? Oh, especially – yeah, money. especially in the business it is, because um, it's all, all. I mean, I used to go there, especially when I was a very young child, with my papa, he used to work in behind the scenes in the business, so we used to 
go over there. And it was all very much that. But here we are. Sam has asked something now. I just want to draw attention to this because this is, uh, let's see, we believe we should be who we want, but not pushed into our kids so young as they are now pushing onto our kids, are they? At school, four is too young for our kids to be pushed into it. Who's pushing them into what? Because this is what gets me right, and I've said this again and again. Who says when this world was created and when humans evolved, who said that the only thing that everyone had to go to a straight cis person to decide what was allowed or what isn't allowed? And this is where, Sam, I'm not getting at you, but Sam, this is where I put up again. This is where it all gets into this panic situation. I know that you're not panicking, but what I'm saying is, is this idea that children are being tamed and the minds are being tamed. Look, you are not going, if you, there's a famous case, oh, I can't remember his name. There was a young boy and actually Oprah interviewed him when he was a man. And when he was a child, uh, nearly all the men in America have circumcision. And they went to get him circumcised as a mother and they accidentally cut his penis off as a baby. So the idea was to turn him into a girl and bring him up as a girl so he I've didn't know. Mm. Yep, just to do that. Well, do you know what happened, Sam? And it's, it's a horrible interview to watch with Oprah Winfrey because his mother is destroyed. And she's saying she knew the minute she put a dress on him and he tried to tear it off, she thought, what have I agreed to here? Because she listened to the doctors. That man is not with us anymore because he ended up exiting this world by his own hand because of that. But right. as he explained, he weather. thought... The weather's because yeah. we're talking about him. That's the main thing. Yeah, that. that's it. That's the main thing. Mm. Now, he he um, had to go through a life believing he was female. And, they and not wanted... Yeah, they, they, no, no one told him. Yeah, no one told him. They brought him up like it was a terrible disaster. And I'm telling you now, you will not grow up being transgender you won't grow up being gay you won't grow up being lesbian unless it's actually in you so you can't be you know hypnotized into doing it but this idea and this is what i mean there's a panic going on but what's your view on this lauren my view is something like that was a terrible accident and in that case um my view is that for a child people i don't it, it t i think everyone is different mm. and it's it's a it's a very it, it's a there there's a lot of children who are will who will who will decide what they would like to be yeah. as they grow older and there are drugs that can can slow down their pubescence as mm. well while that's happening but I think it, it is up to the child to make the decision, not the adult. Um, and because it was my decision, you know, yeah. and not my parents. Um, and I think that, I think that, you know, it is up to, you've got, uh, I, it's very complicated now. There yeah. has, it's very complicated when it, it's a very, when you know you are a woman trapped in the wrong body there's no doubt in your mind yeah and it's not like it happens when you're a teenager you know basically from a child don't you a very very young child well but it, in, in my case you see um Anne, i believe now people can say i'm crazy and they've said it before but i was in the kitchen and i was peeling potatoes and suddenly james went away and lauren came back came into me and they said she said Lauren, I'm sorry, but James is gone now. You're here, and you've got to have you you you've got to have you've got to be Lauren now. Yeah. The world, and that's what happened to me because I was quite happy until I was about 19, and then I felt trapped. I trapped yeah. felt like I was trapped in a, build, a burning building. I couldn't yeah. get out. So I I we had no money. 
um, and only a yellow pages, and uh, you know, and here I am today. So yeah, I had two suicide attempts, yeah. um, and uh, beta blockers, and, and I, so there isn't anything I haven't been through, so I can relate to, to this situation. Yeah. Um, but it is up to you know you've got to I I have to have therapy before surgery, um, but mm. you have to find a good therapist, not yeah. somebody because I called it the paper trail. You know, mm. people who are just making money out of you. So you got your, you know, you got your, you got your paper trail, then you got yeah. your surgery. Because surgery is fine, but then you have to live as a woman. You live as a yeah. woman first, but then you've got to live forever as a woman. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you get swollen ankles, you get your best gets bigger, you look pregnant. You know, there are situations where you get your hormones are up and down. You know, you you are a woman in, in so many ways, except childbirth. Yet. Yeah. So that's what people don't understand. You know, you have a vagina. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, so it, it you you seriously do become a a, a woman. And, yeah. And, but it, it's a shock. And it took me. I was as skinny as a reed. It took me about ten to fifteen years to have any curves at all. You yeah. Know? So, but regards to you know, it's a very complex subject. But regards to the way things are now, I think it has escalated far too much yeah. when yeah. we suggest, you know, what I would like to be in a room of children and I would like to speak to the children and then I would know if they're yeah. just growing up or they actually have issues. But mm. now everything is being looked at as if everything, it's everyone's the same. Everyone who wear, wants to wear a dress, oh, they must be a girl. That's not necessarily true. Yeah. There's an awful lot of little boys who are policemen now who wore a dress. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I remember the gender men days of the 80s, right? Um, it was fashionable for men to go around with makeup on, to wear mini skirts and all this. The that 80s. was the height of fashion. There was nothing, nothing trans sexual about them, transgender, no. uh, transsexual as people called there. And uh, there was nothing gay about them. It was just the fashion at the time. But I have, this is the um, problem with it, as I see it now, is it's gone, I say, it's gone to, it's like, look at intersex now. Greece has just come forward and they've done something absolutely amazing. They've banned operating on intersex children. Now, for people in the chat don't know, Alex, I've explained for intersex, the old word was hermaphrodite. And you have various degrees of what makes someone a hermaphrodite. Now, a doctor without a second thought will operate on a baby, not a, name, not a toddler, a baby, to make them look, quotation marks, normal. That goes wrong so many times because with intersex people, you don't know which is the predominant sex until we hit puberty. You don't know. And there's been terrible things done with that. But yet no one bats an eyelid about babies being operated on. Literally, when you think of it, um, the sexual organs that inside messed about with. In the womb. In the world, and then so it that should be illegal. Well, in Greece, they've stopped it now, they've stopped all this now. Oh, but that's... you never had a choice. I mean, when I was 13, that's when I found out going on late 12, 13, I can never remember which age it was. I one night I thought at first I had indigestion, and then I was in absolute doubled over in pain. So, luckily, um. The ambulance came quick, or I would have been dead, got me into hospital, dragged into an operation the operating theatre. Then I was told by this Indian doctor, and I said, they used the word hermaphrodite. Then he said, you know um, what's different about you? So I said, no. And then he explained to me, he said, you were born with a womb and one ovary. And he said, the ovary's just matured. And he said, you would have died if we hadn't have um, taken into the operation theatre. But... People, for some reason, I say in a situation like when someone's got a day, you've got no choice but to operate on them. But a baby, and just for aesthetic reasons, not for health reasons, no, reasons, no one kicks off about that. Nice. Yeah, 
and no one can very brave, that. though, Anne. You've been very brave. Yeah, you just um, it is. It's but well, people don't understand, and also they think. They, they, I'll tell you what, Anne. If people don't go through something, they sometimes don't understand it. Yeah, but again, sometimes they refuse to understand it, Lauren, as well. And I won't give some them people who are just who usually have issues themselves with their gender. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I remember I worked in a pub and um, I was attracted to the barman, stocky Welshman. And um, this is before surgery, mind you. Hmm. And uh, and he knew that, you know, he, he know, but nothing, nothing happened. But he he knew um, that they, that he was. So he sacked me. But it, it's an issue. They, he was nasty. A lot of people can be nasty to you because they are having feelings themselves. And yeah. they've got insecurities themselves. And that's why you get people calling you names or people shouting at your house and stuff like that because yeah. they're the people who can't handle their problems and don't have the confidence to ever handle them at all. Yeah. And maybe wait till they're Caitlyn Jenner until they're, God knows, too old. Yeah. yeah but that's um, so true. And I remember me and Mama, God rest her soul, she used to always say, she turned around and said, she said, um, no, about these men that were all like dead or uh, back up against the wall, lads and all that, and going on over macho. And she say, get them in a kitchen on your own. She said, and, uh, a few pints down, I mean, she said, they'll be the ones that will make the pass. And that's the truth that that has happened. That has happened a few times where it's the one that's going on, like, you know, the same. And I used to say, I always used to say to people, look, said, if someone's straight, if a man's straight, What's he got to be scared of, a gay man or transgender or anything? I said, what's he got to be scared of? I said, if he's so tough, he can just punch them in the face to get away from them. I said, they're not going to hold him down. I said, it's because it's that reflection thing, the scared that being in that person's presence might bring out something exactly. about that. Or maybe it. just just in a, a general sense, it could be sort of... Um, they they are attracted to a gay, uh, you know. They might be they might be working with someone and they they're married, and they yeah. might they might be attracted to someone who's male who works there. Yeah. And, but they can't handle that feeling, so they will lash out at that person because they will can't handle the feelings that they have about yeah. what their body's telling them. If you get my meaning. Oh, I do get um, what you mean, definitely. Mm. It is, um, and also, this is the thing, especially when you're talking about, you know when people say about um, choosing, there's nothing you choose. You no, choose I... to be gay, you choose to be transgender, and it's like, does anyone really, now I, I didn't come up with this quote, I remember someone else years ago saying this, they said, uh, they said, do you really think that you wake up one morning and think, I want to have a life of hell by oh. getting bigotry and hatred thrown at me? They said, it doesn't work like that. They said, you don't just wake up and think, oh, this is what I want. I want to go through this trouble. They and said, to it's be honest, easy. I don't think I realised how much I, I, my life yeah. would change, not in a physical sense, more mm. as, as, as the way that I would be accepted. I mean, when I came um, out in Max Clifford was my agent when I first went public. Yeah, we had to raise twenty-two thousand um, pounds. My father was in prison for something he didn't do, mm -hmm. and we know this happens now. There are two movies about it all the time, and uh, you know, I literally, you know, had to sell my story to raise the money, and. Uh, Max, you know, and it was just, it was, it was a, it was a, it was a hard, you know, I, and I realized, you know, that Max was a, you know, I went on television and all that, but it was, I didn't realize they'd say things like sex swap Lauren Harry's, um, yeah. Lauren Har woman, not, no man not wants to be woman. And, mm. you know, this was, this was, this was, too, you know, and then I would be on the Priory and they've got Zoe Ball and, and Jamie Thickston saying, you used to be a fella, mm. you know, and I, and I and, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying, well, and I have to nod my head and, and smile. And, and I didn't know, I thought, well, after surgery, that I have the body that I wanted, 
that I'd be coming out into a world where I would be accepted without prejudice and the transphobia or or and, uh, but it, I didn't and and it was very it was very hard um we had books through the windows we had death threats we were beaten up outside house. I was beaten up outside my house yeah, we had um we had um I had to I was so many horrible things being said I would go up in the attic and literally stay there until they left mm -hmm. so you know I still have times where I don't go out because I I'm scared and and that feeling is I fight it every day. Um, yeah. But you know it is it you know it it's because you know but I people think oh she's such a confident woman she's such a confident person and and I am but I'm also mm. a person. Yeah. And and you know and and after being um, you know and, and you know the you know the press I make sure now that this doesn't happen with the press. The press, they, I, I, they treat, they say woman now. They say mm. sex, um, you know, sex babe or whatever. Mm. You know, they, they, it's changed now. But it took me twenty something years, Anne, for that to happen. Yeah, it took years, so that somebody who wakes up one day and says to themselves, you know, they, you know, or has starts having feelings and wants to be a woman, they can look at someone like myself and say, she did it. Mm. And so can I, and I know that, you know, and if there's anything that I ever need to know, she'll be there to help me. And that is true. I'm always there to help in this. Yeah. Issue. And that's why I'm here. It's not for fame. It's not for to be on television. It's not to mm. be naked on television. That was mm. a political point to show people that because I sing with a lot of drag queens on stage, they assume you are a drag queen. So yeah. I went on that show to show people Listen, this is who I am. This is the body I have. Get used to it and remember yeah. it. And it's never been forgotten. And I haven't been on television since. They said, Hollywood, if you said, um, or somebody said, once you are naked attraction, you're never on television again. Oh. But, you know, the, uh, that's rubbish. But the fact is, though, that I went on that show to show people my body. And that was hard, you know? Yeah hard to do and it was a i'm sorry naked attraction but it's a slightly tacky show um and a bit you know showing your body parts bit by bit but the fact is that you know it, it, it i made a point and that will be on tv forever for yeah. people to learn and watch and, and realize that it's not you know you can do it it all depends on the courage that you have mm. and the motivation and the people around you and the support yeah. And obviously, I know that I'm lucky with my family, and I'm very lucky with my family. But because I have been abused so much, they're very overprotective mm. um, about my life and about about about. And that can be wonderful, and that can be that can be hard because um, you know they don't want me to they don't want me to to lose the plot because. Yeah. So they're always sort of saying, you know, uh, but uh, but they but uh, because. It's taken me a long time to be this Lauren in my head now, mm. instead of trusting the wrong people and trusting the wrong, the wrong agents. And uh, I mean, Max Clifford came in, and 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 I, we had a row, and you know, and I've met so many people in the business, and as they say, and there is no business like show business. But oh, yeah, the human well. the humanistic side of this is this: is mm. that. You know, we were, we should be who we want to be, no matter what. And um, and it's not about labels, Anne. It's about yeah. human people. And mm. you know, if 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 somebody truly wants to be the, the, the in the right body, they should be allowed to be. Um, and 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 if the if a fireman suddenly decides to be a woman, he shouldn't be allowed to say it the next day. You know, dressed in in his fireman suit. Oh, mm. no. it's not fair because yeah. you know because it literally you know I I was I had a nappy on for for about for three weeks after surgery. I was on a mm. drip. It's a serious. It's a serious. Oh, serious. You know, I mean, it really yeah. is serious. And I was nine stone, and mm. they, you know, and then and then you know then you and I and I thought I'm never going to get curves, and I've got so many curves and nothing fits. Yeah.
spin. <laughs> so many curves. I've got to, uh, my bust is huge. My hips are too big. No, nothing. I can't get in anything now. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? But yeah, it's it, important what you say about the fact that it's not, it's a serious operation. And of course, it's the operation, it can never be undone once it's done. Now, yes. that's why when people say, oh, you know, treat us if it's some kind of fashion accessory. No, look, and people do, and we have to say this, and I've said this before, because I've met someone that, uh, um, female to male, and it just went wrong for her in the end. Um, I'll quickly tell people this story. Again, I used to work with the probation service with drug users, and one day this, I thought, man walked in, and I was just looking and I thought he's very top heavy. I mean, top heavy as in breasts. And so I was looking and I thought, I want, and I, I first thought, is he insects? I thought, maybe so. Anyway, I said to his nephew, as I thought he, I said, oh, I said, your uncle, I said, hey, said was just talking to him. And he went under his breath, he went, aunt. And I thought, if I said something, so I went to his, I thought, I better get this cleared up. I went to his mother and I said, look, I said, I've just said about your um, brother to your son, you know, about him being a nice uncle. And he went and, and she said, oh, God. And then she told me, and she said, I'll explain it to you now. She said, she went through um, all the hormonal treatment. She said, we went through hell with her because it was a long, as you know, long, a long, long process, difficult process. Went right through it. She went through all the hormones. She um, got her, um, uh, did she get a wound taken out? I can't remember. Uh, no, I don't think she did. It was just the hormone she went through. Well, then, last minute, she decided that she wanted to stay as a woman. But by then, the hormones have had altered her. And when you saw her and she'd come in and present herself as a woman, but you'd say, you'd actually think that was a trans woman. You'd think, you know, it was, and big deep voice as well. And it was just so tragic. So sometimes it does, but I blame that if that happens, that's gotta be somewhere the psychiatrist or the psychologist has made a mistake and not picked up on something because they shouldn't be making it back. That happens all the time, man, because- yeah. Unfortunately, it's the money they make out of it. Um, and it's, you know, I met London counsellors and I knew they weren't very, I mean, therapists, and I knew they weren't very good. Mm. But I, I just thought, well, all I want is the surgery. And if they let me have the surgery, then, I, you know, that's fine, you know. So I, I did that. And then when I had the surgery, I thought I was going to feel euthoric and alive. Yeah and amazing and i remember a film a frozen with mel gibson and um he froze himself and then he went into back into the 30s you know i remember being in in uh, in this white sterile bed and i had um it was just before surgery and i was just going to go and i went to the bathroom and looked at myself for the last time and um i didn't look at myself for very long mm. But um, I and I just I just thought well, you know this 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 is the day, you know this is the day that's going to be that that's going to change me forever. And then a couple of hours later, you know I I thought you know I would feel like like you know I feel so mm. much you know I feel like I've been given um, oxycodone and and all this and and feel euphoric because I finally had the party, but. I didn't. I thought I'm too skinny. Um, I have no bust, um, and it, this is just a work in progress. Um, yeah. and, and the way you think you'll feel and the way you do feel are, are totally separate things because we imagine we're going yeah. to be this butterfly, and uh, it takes time to to you know to, to become the butterfly. Um, yeah. And it, you know, it took you know it took me a while. But I got there, but it took me, it took me, it just when you have surgery, it takes your, your body to readjust, as far as I'm concerned, at least 10 years yeah. to really, for those hormones to really kick in, you know? Yeah. Well, it's like, um, I remember 
Ju- oh, what was her name? Julia. I can't remember. She was one of the ones that really brought to the public attention. She went through her process and operation in the 70s, late 70s on television. I think it was the late 70s, so very, very early 80s. And she went through it and she came back a few years later to do another show. And it was about people wanting to go through the reassignment surgery. And she said to one, she said, well, what do you think will happen when you have the surgery? And he was going, well, I'll be more feminine. I'll be this, I'll be that. And she turned around to you and she said, no, she said, you'll be exactly the same person. She said, you might look different when you look in the mirror, but she said, inside, you're still the same person. She said, you don't get a personality transplant. No. And as you said, it's this expectation that everything's going to uh, change overnight and it's going to be like this magical pill. Actually, from what I've heard from a lot of people who have um, gone through the surgery, both women and men, they say it actually gets worse for them after well, it's more it, intense. I was, um, first of all, I, I mean, I believe uh, the, uh, the difference with transgender, I believe, is that we, we should be legally identified as women. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. And regards to the issue as as um, anybody can call themselves a woman, that's a fa- That's hopefully going to be a fad because it's not. Yeah. Fair. Um, yeah. And um, you know, but but uh, but you know, but y- you have a dream, um, and you you and you go you go for it. But you're right. You are the, you are going to be the same the same the same mm-hmm. mentality. But as I say. As I say, it takes time to readjust for your body to heal, the yeah. hormones to work, um, and then eventually it happens. And mm. then you can't get into a size twelve anymore. You know, it just mm. it, it does happen, <laughs> and you get that that Marilyn, you know, that Jane Mansfield sort of look, or yeah. whatever. And and you know, but but you're right. You know, it, there isn't a magic pill. But mm. um, you know there is there it, it takes time uh, and it takes and that's the thing it takes patience. Yeah, we know in this world that we live in, it's not a patient world. People yeah, are straight away and with regards to this gender reassignment, I've said this before. I was so impatient. I wanted it yesterday. Yeah, so if I had my time over. I think I might have wait if I knew what I knew now. I'd say maybe I wait a year or so. Yeah, you know, it, I was, you know, I, it was my choice to be on my own. But obviously, financially, it was hard for the family to stay in London. Mm. Um, I met Robbie Williams. He sent me some orchids to the hospital. Mm. Um, I was on this morning before and after surgery. But the thing is, I was so busy dealing with so much. I shouldn't have been doing any of that. Yeah. I should have been thinking about myself and my well-being and not that other side but i'm pleased i did it for for the fact that in the archives it's there for people to see and yeah. people to see you know the, the the way the way you you the way the way you can the way you change and the way you look because after mm-hmm. surgery you know you start your whole body changes but it and your face changes but yeah. it takes time it does your body remember your body's being in the, I had a lot of male hormones for quite a while, so yeah. I has to get rid of all those hormones to readjust. But after going through, you know, someone said, when you're 30, you might just pack up and die. I said, okay, that's fine. So when they say to me, well, um, Joe Blog down the street said he was a woman and he, 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 he does 24 weights a day. Well, I'm sorry, you have no right. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It's just, it, it is, as you say, it's going into, and uh, it's doing no, um, it's doing nothing to lessen the bigotry and hatred because it just plays right oh, into the hands. Well, that's of why there needs to be someone going to schools, mm. telling people what it is like. So that the, because I mean, when I found out that they actually teach m- uh, masturbation in schools now, mm. I mean, I was, I thought that I'm sorry, but you know, I might be of an age where, but that's not necessary. I mean, I we all know we all know that that we don't need to be told that because yeah. our tell us for us, so we don't need to be told, and children don't need to be told. 
children yeah. should be chosen for as long as they could. I was a child prodigy, and I still stayed a child. Mm -hmm. I never acted like I was an adult, but I was a child. And That's I, it. You know, I played with fairies. I played with care bears. I I collected antiques. I I I I, I always stayed relatively sweet. On the mm. show I was had to be short on was the one with Jeff Goldblum and Frank Skinner and um, Terry Wogan, who yeah. all went at me. They all mm. I thought I was going on Terry Wogan, and then suddenly I was being Frank Skinner was yeah. on there. But if I had your my way, I'd give you a slap across the yeah. back. And I yeah. and I said I and I had I ripped him to shreds. Mm. But that was because I had to fight my corner. Um, yeah. Which I had to do since the day I went on TV. Mm. To be honest, I've always had strong opinions, but but I but you know and and TV should not be afraid of opinions. No, it shouldn't be. But you know, it, is. it shouldn't be afraid. I know they. You should be able to go on shows and and you should be able to say how you feel and mm. and there shouldn't be any restraints. I mean, I yeah. know. I a little bit on an, an impression on this morning, but that was so that that transgender issue was remembered for the rest of its life, and mm -hmm. it shall be. But that's the only show I may have overreacted about. <laughs> but one thing I loved you said, which um, always stuck in my mind, um, and you said about when you were, you know, on Terry Wogan and that period of your life as the child prodigy, and you turned around and said. Well, what's the not to love about a Cupid? Someone that a child that looks like a Cupid with the voice of Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> I thought that was an absolutely wonderful and I, and, and I and I did sound them all like Margaret Thatcher. It was sort of yes, uh, Mar you know, not that I'm an advocate of her, but or yeah. any politician for that matter. But I, I I was because it was the eighties and we were all yeah. brainwashed by her. But but you know what sort of Help me out is my artwork mm. um, over this, 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 the, the COVID, uh, whatever that's helped me. Um, these last few years, um, that's kept me going. Now, just let's point out, Lauren, you have a website which I put a yeah. link to in the description. Oh. And Lauren, you sell your paintings, don't you? Your artwork as well. So, I do people have free messages, um, yeah. as well, and uh, we sell prints and cards, yeah. Um, and yeah, and that's what's when you see no one had any work when this whole came out. We you couldn't go to a club and sing, you, you couldn't do anything. Yeah. So, I started putting cats on the Instagram, um, and they said, Can we buy one? And mm. then I thought, Well, I'll start my own gallery now, and yeah, that, and that's what's kept me going. You know, financially, I mean, not that I'm, you know, they're selling like a Picasso would, but you know, if I get run over by a train, you never know. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, you're not going to, you're not going to, but yeah, um, oh, here we go. Here's um, Miss Magpie, and just yourself has put the um link up. There's also, if you look, Miss Magpie, there's a um, there's a link to the website as well, Lauren's website. Oh, and you, but Lauren. yeah, it's there, uh, but. Yeah, there's, Definitely. there's hundreds of pictures there and self-portraits and um, yeah and, uh, but yeah but you know they say art is therapy and i think that's my therapy yeah and you definitely this say that's because people who are used to my channel um when i talk to people i'm never so sort of like you know sitting there in total admiration of them but when you say you were, you was a pioneer, really. Well, are still a pioneer. You are, Lauren, and this is it. You're the embodiment of, and I can only look at and wish that I had the same spirit as you. I couldn't have continued. You've just got that. We just mentioned Margaret Thatcher, right? Now, not on a political ideology, I'm saying that, but there was a woman that was determined yeah. to get to where she wanted to be. And you're exactly the same in that respect. You do... And that's what I find amazing about you. Oh, are you, Sespo? Sespo's um, had oh, some... Sespo, shady. Yeah, Hi, she's... Hi, uh, Lauren. She's, um, she's had some... Maybe you'll have to on next time and a better hairdo because... Do you I know what, Lauren? You look... I wish I looked like you without makeup on. This is a natural with two pins in. 
this is how I look when I just wake up. Oh God, I don't. I remember when I was a little child, I told people before they say because I was brought up. I never had a choice. I was put into it, but I liked it. I was put into ballet training as a very young child, and I remember someone coming up to me. Um, and saying, oh, it's a good job you're going to be on the stage because they won't be able to see your face, will they? Oh, and I thought, that, that's how cruel the industry is, isn't it? They just don't care. They don't care one bit what they say to you. They don't care, no. And you, to be honest with you, man, this is the truth about looks. It's the soul that counts. And yeah. you have a lovely soul. You've got lovely hair. And, you know, and you, your beauty shines through. When you start talking to you, it shines through. And, and that's what oh, you see. You. And it is. And you are very pretty. And that's true. And, I, you know, I always tell the truth. Um, yeah. oh, it's yeah. the soul, Anne. You know, it's the soul. Yeah. It's not what we look like. Although that, yeah. that is now the click, click Instagram and, and, and painting pictures all the time. But yeah. it is the soul. And it's our spirit. And it's, it's our character. And that's yeah. what's most important at the end of the day. And that's what makes us beautiful. It's not it what we look does. like. Certainly does not say it changes throughout time, doesn't it? The, the ideal standard of beauty changes with a. Um, well, no, it's not that. Like it's people copy and they think, yeah. oh, well, she looked like that in EastEnders. So let's get those extensions. Yeah. Let's get that. Oh, let's look like her, that pink dress. She's. I've seen one of those in Peacocks. Oh, it's that stuff. Like that. I'll wear that and I'll yeah. wear that and I'll wear those shoes and I'll look just like a don't be anybody but who you want to exactly. be. Exactly. I've always said this, the tribal, I call it the um, tribal quest that they go on. It's like people go, oh, you know, I'm an independent person and all this. And you say, no, you're not because you're dressed exactly like your peers and all that. Yeah. Where I always was, and I think this had a lot to do with my mama because my mama was very forward thinking, especially for a time. So this was a woman that was in the army during the first world war and everything and she was always because of her grandmother she always loved said oh said people should i can't be bothered with boring people said i can't be bothered with boring people said i won't call it she used to love um, all the because i say me being in the industry my dad being in the industry as well do you know what i've just realized i never say that word dad that, that must be the first time i've said dad there must Happen, be a I would say. Strange. That. that must be a story behind that, Anne, I should think. Yeah, I don't know why I said that, because I would say, Pam, but um, he, I say in the industry he worked in, now he was, and this is what I said to people, they reckon he, because I was in ballet and all that, and he put, and it was him that made the decision for that to happen, they always imagined this foppish Oscar Wilde type, you know, really theatrical. He mm. wasn't, he was a really tough scouser, who used to, I found out when I went to work for the police, he used to um, challenge them to fights in the cells. So I didn't know, that was all hidden from me that he was, you know, like that. But he had no problems, no issues because of the people. And I remember um, I asked my mama because he passed away before I asked him, I said, well, I said he was so macho. I said he was so, could be aggressive at times with people, not with me, but I said, I said, how come I said he was so laid back in that sense? And she turned around and said, what it was, she said, he was, he couldn't see anything, he said, wrong with someone, uh, especially a male, let's say drag drag acts, drag queens. He said, mm. he couldn't see anything wrong with that at all. She said, it was just in his nature. She said, he was used to seeing colour. He was used to seeing really exuberant people so she said that's how he um could but as i say i was lucky in that sense anyway i was very very lucky in that sense oh Please. camels oh yes I, I, what were you gonna say on carol no camel I, I never like saying the name i say camel flavor oh, and i'm yeah. always scared camel putting your thing up because it is a bit rude saying i'm a scouser too <laughs> but yet um it's... No, I do a really good Scouse action, accent. I'm Go from the Liverpool. Liverpool. Um, <laughs> so can you speak to me like that? That's right, love. All right. I, you do a good I American don't... one, don't you? We saw no. that on a... Um, no, I do a good Blanche. Um, I, was, I was talking to him and he just didn't realise how beautiful <laughs> I was. 
<laughs> it's just oh, so no. wonderful. It just uh, accents come easily. Oh, there's the Irish. Yeah, I've done a few uh, a few jobs in my day, and I had to ha know how to do an accent. So if you want to be Ireland, it's quite easy to be Irish. If you really, really mm. want to be. So it's just, but unfortunately, Anne, in this industry, there is a lot of transphobia in regards to work too. I yeah. mean, you, know, you see the same old faces on TV, and yet there are people out there like myself who, you know, who's got to start a whole new life because because they 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 will only they seem you seem to only see the same old faces. Yeah. I mean, I've all oh. these faces. I've met them numerous times, but you know, is it you know they? How can anyone really be scared of, of me? Um, mm. I think you know. There's I think. I think that um, what you see is what you get. Yeah, I've always and um, you know if and you know there's about eight researchers. Um, you know there's there's hundreds of researchers who research you on TV. So yeah. you know they all know who I am. So, but you know there was a time when you know fame can be addictive and and, and you just think oh that's all you want. But um, after a time that does sort of you think well you know what. Um, that's not the only part of life. There are other things which are just as important. Well, that's another thing I liked about it was when you always said you were a, uh, you always said that you were, once the lights hit on you on Oprah Winfrey and all that, you were hooked on us because there is in the industry this, especially in Britain, it's like, oh, no, I don't really, this just sort of happened, you know, like they yeah. just sort of got this attention and it's total nonsense. It's that much hard work. And this is what I always say to people, because I used to, um, oh God, many years ago when I first retired from ballet, I used to, for a while, go into training people up. Funny enough, actors, and I never did any acting. The only acting I did was in regard to the, um, in ballet. You'd have to do it through mime or whatever. But I used to try and give them leads and all this. And I'd see them. And they'd say, they'd suddenly say, oh, wait a minute, I can't stay for rehearsals today because um, I've got to go and pick my grandchildren up. And I'd say, well, if you're on a multi-million pound show, I said, you'd have to get someone else to pick up your grandchildren. I said, because they won't have it. You'll be banned from the industry from life for life if you don't turn up for the performance. And I used to stress them. I'd say, you do know, I'd say 90, yeah, I'd say more now, more than 90% of being in this industry is all planning, planning. Working, working. I said, actually getting out there and doing it is a tiny bit of the process. It is. It is. So I said, you don't fall into it by accident. The most famous one was it was a um, EDPF or the wonderful EDPF oh, musical voice. I want to be known. She's beautiful. And if anyone hasn't seen the film, no, it's not EDPF. Uh, I've watched the film and, and it's wonderful. very, it's very symbolic. And I, yeah. I understand it. And if people don't understand it, then they should watch it again because. Yeah. It, the little black bird, wasn't she? That's what they called the Yeah, the little sparrow. Little, little sparrow. sparrow. Um, she was and, a... and that's Greta Garbo who said, I want to be alone. But it was drugs with her, wasn't it? And yeah, that's what, what it, they Well, what it was with uh, with EDPF, they used to call her an overnight cessation. And she had overnight cessation. She had 10 years, she had been on stage before she had I ever got a television show. Well, and before me. that, as a child. So look how many shows I went on before Big Brother. Yeah. You know, lots and lots of shows I went on. I'm bit on the side. I did for about six years before I went on Big Brother. So, you know, it was a lot. And then they all say, oh, Lauren from Big Brother. Now it's Lauren from Naked Attraction. It's, yeah. You know, it's not, it's, you know, it's, 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 you know, that is when I believe TV was go, you know, when we had three stations, that's when TV mm. was at its best. Yeah. That's TV yeah. was alive and exciting, and you had live television, and you never knew what to expect. And yeah. you know, you, you know, you had Joan Rivers, and and you know, you you not that she was a nice. I met met Joan Rivers. Yeah. Um, you know, you you had you you had some really exceptional. But now anyone can be on television. It's not you know, television is Instagram. It's there. Yeah. It, it's it's not it's not quite the same as it used to be. No, it's not. You never used to um, as I say you used to have to work for it 
for a long, long time, and yeah. then there was only television, or if you were really lucky, film or the theatre, that was the uh, main staple, the theatre acts. But now you can be famous for not for having being, any talent. For not doing for, anything. For not doing it and just literally looking the right way. The one that gets me, and I can't remember her name, if anyone remembers in the chat, but especially Instagram, and this is one comes on with a wig, a pink wig on. And she just yeah. literally does this, goes. Oh. And that's it. Oh. And it's like strange. Yeah. You yeah. Know. But ben. no, it 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 just makes me think that when when you see the certain only a certain amount of people, the same people on television all the time, yeah. you just think, well, you know, they give other people a chance, you know. Yeah. That, let them be seen because you're seen every day. And yeah. I think it's time that, you know, you should let someone else be seen um, because they have something to offer more than you do, than they do, because everyone knows them inside mm -hmm. out, especially everyday programs like Loose Women this morning. Yeah. They're always they're always on and everybody knows so much that yeah. they they might as well know what they eat for breakfast and they probably do and they probably eat the same food but yeah. is that there are people proper, and there's so many actors as well who, who could you know but it's not that though it's the fact that with regards to gender you know how many transgendered people are there on tv now that you can think of well there's only oh what's the name will not willoughby um india willoughby's on india who all just flapped a, a, a baps about on Big Brother most of the time. Yeah, I'm just going to say something, Camel. I'm going to have to just because I can't delete, I'm going to have to put that one in timeouts. Be careful what words you use. And I know I'm not doing it to be nasty, but what you've just said about Joan Rivers and why she, you know, died, I'm going to have to put you in timeout to get rid of it. I'm sorry I've had to do that, but if you put things up like that, the algorithm sorts it. They know they're a chance and by doing that, don't they? So. Well, the thing is, you're talking about no restrictions. I did a video about a young girl and the inqu inquest has come out, um, Molly, and the inquest has come out to say that she never took her own life. She just, um, it was because of harm and video she was watching on the internet now i just put that video up and suddenly i get a message from youtube saying no we're really concerned that you're thinking of this place you can go to for help and all that and that was just by once mentioning that word the s word for taking your own way out and you have to be very but camel i hate to do on that you but it's just so that the thing you doesn't get there the well, you know, in the near future i'm opening a youtube channel so it is going to happen. My brother, yeah. Patrick's idea, he said, you've got to do a channel. And I've just been, um, I've been delaying that. But it is going to happen. Um, and my book is going to happen too. It will, it will do. It's just that I've been writing it with somebody called Edward Payne. And I'm yeah. sorry, Edward, but, you know, it's been a bit of a pain because I, I you know, they always, with writing, it's, one of the hard people think some people think they can write and and, and you know and, and oh, they, they really think it, they can write um but you know it, it, but all writing needs editing and then really looking mm. at checking um and if you if you can't you know because i know when my box out it's going to fly off the shelves because people yeah. don't know really what i've been through in my life they've seen me on shows yeah. but they don't know the personal side and yeah. I know that once it's out, it's going to flap the shelves. But I had to work with this man for two years. And then I read it and I thought, well, no, this isn't good enough yet. We'll work on it more. But then he said, no, I want you to pay me. And I said, well, not really. No, I won't pay you until we've got it out there. And then mm -hmm. you can get the, you can get the, 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 the benefits from the sales. That wasn't acceptable. So, yeah. so when people say, oh, did you ever get your book out? I, I have been doing my book. But unfortunately, you know, I'll only when with a book you have that you they've got to see your soul and your heart. And yeah, they've got to be with you 100 percent. And until that time, um, I prefer not to have a book out and to have a shitty book out. Yeah.
Well, I remember it. Uh, funny enough, you know, I was going to talk about this someone yesterday um, that is writing a book about their life. And they were talking about, you know, doing it. And I said exactly what you've just said. I said, people think, oh, I write a book. It's one mm-hmm. of the most difficult. And I remember an authoress years ago saying, she said, it's like when she had time shows books, she said, it's when she gets to that point where it's getting ready, she said, it's really like being pregnant and pushing a baby out because she said, one, she said, you don't know when to stop. She said, you keep on wanting to go back and play with it and fiddling with it and change this. And she said, it's the most horrible feeling. She said, when it's out there, she said, you know, you can't bring it back. No. And she said, that's the worst thing. But an editor, as I said to this uh, person I know, I said, the, once you get an editor, that's the worth gold because they'll know exactly where to say, look, get this all in order, get this in order. Well, that's why my mum's going to help me with it. Although she's got to read things she might not want to read, it is better to have someone you know to do it um, than a, a stranger to do it. And we're going to try that way yeah. of doing it because, um, you know, so that, you know, so it will, you know, because... There's a story, and then the, it'll be in a book form. And I want it to be a book to help the world, a yeah. book of the younger generation to know what to do when they feel trapped in any in, in any way or shape form. Yeah. And um, I've read a lot. I've read um, April Ashley's book. I've April read all. Ashley. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've read all the autobi- I'm an autobiography buff. I love them. So I, you know, but I'm also a perfectionist too. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, if it's not right, I don't, I don't get it out there. Um, and that's, and that's the truth. So, yeah. you know, it, it can take a long time to get a book out, but when it's out, it will be it's, out and I will be there showing the world my book. Oh, I'll definitely um, be interested in reading that. And April Ashley, I, I'm sure it will be much, much more oh, interesting. Exactly. April Ashley's exactly. book was a little bit dull, but it was, but the, she was a beautiful woman, though, wasn't she? Oh, amazing. But the thing about April Ashley, you had to be careful because I met April Ashley a few times and you had to be uh, very careful with her because she was a bit of a storyteller. In other words, she'd elaborate things. But I remember her. Um, saying she said um when she went there and then it was literally as she said she said back then it was almost almost buttery she said what they used to do to people she, she was one of the first ones and she was asked if she'd um wouldn't have gone through it knowing that she died she said i wouldn't have cared she said i wouldn't have cared she said i would have rather died on the table that's what i she believe yeah exactly. and that's how safe yeah, it, it is because if I hadn't, if I, if I hadn't, I would have preferred to have died than not to have been the body I was in now. It, yeah, it's, it's true. And and you know, life is 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 there's more to this dimension, this world than we 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 believe because yeah. we were here by some force. Mm-hmm. Um, so we should never forget that there is a higher force than we are out there. Um, and um, you know, in you know, there's so much more, out, you know, in regards to the world than than our than our. The problem is with people, Anne, is they're so engrossed in their own problems they can't see through the cracks, and those yeah. cracks are the lights and and and, and, and you know and, and the, the 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 fact that you know we were put here, someone put us here, so that means there is magic in this world. I believe that. Oh, yeah. But it, the thing is, this, uh, Lauren, when you look back now, this is fascinating. What well, I'd find fascinating because I'd say your life, we can't imagine um, living your life, especially, I say, from such a young age, being in the public eye and also being so distinctive. This was another thing. You weren't just some child on the television. You were one of the most memorable children at that time. And there was no one like you. You were totally unique totally unique now when you look back to those days and how your life progressed and now as an adult you look back on it what advice would you give to yourself back then um what advice would i give um 
Well, I couldn't have done any better then. I couldn't have done any other shows better mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. uh, I put everything into them. You know, I, I, if I could go back and speak to James now, I'd mm -hmm. say, I'd probably say, listen, th this is you as James, but soon, but in about 10 years, you're going to be Lauren. So just get used to it and start, mm -hmm. and start preparing for that. Um, and uh, and I know you're going to be like two people and the world is going to change completely um, from uh, three channels and, you know, and, and, and you are going to actually grow up. Yeah. That is actually going to happen. You're not going to stay 13 forever and you are mm. not a 34-year-old dwarf that someone said that's never going to ah, grow up. Yeah. And what was it? You were a, someone said uh, you were a god or something, something like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. I believe we're all we're all gods because we're all we're all our own creation, you know. Yeah. All, and uh, but yeah, there, there have been an awful lot of, of of people thinking, and I think China thought I was a saint, and there yeah. have been uh, yeah, and I've been to Japan and, and done all the child genius exams and shows, and you know there isn't you know that they came to Cardiff and Australia. It's been lots and lots of lots of things. But um, but life changes, and you've got to change with life, or yeah. you know you have to go. You have to change with life because you know otherwise you're just going to to stay in the shadows, and we can't stay in the shadows, Anne, yeah. because there's too much to be said, and there's too much help to be needed for yeah. so many people. Well, the impression I always got from you when you were a um, child on the television, and. This struck me. I thought this is an old soul speaking here. Yes, so old. Because it was you'd easily forget that you're a child. Very you know, easily forget. I think it and was, it was like, so many adults as well. I yeah. had my mother who was a, a, a quite big success in 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 her life. Um, yeah, she was a formidable character. My parents are formidable. Um, you know that 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 you know my mother's. You know, she's and I was an old soul. Um, yeah. That's why I believe in in in. I believe in reincarnation. I mm. believe in 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 spirits, and I believe in 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 so many things that most probably people would think you know are, are, yeah. are ridiculous. But um, oh, no, nothing is ridiculous. It, it's all possible because we are here, and if we are yeah. here, then everything has to be possible. Well, this, uh, I mean, I believe in reincarnation. I wish it wasn't true. Ironically, I wish it wasn't because the idea of having to come back to this place again and again and again is just oh uh, my God. horrible. But because no matter how good your life is, you're going to suffer somewhere down the line. But um, I can remember as a very young, uh, uh, it was only about four. It was very young. I remember having like, all that I can describe as a vision. I won't go into it now because it'll take too long. And I can remember to this day this vision, and I used to tell me, Mama, and I'd say, "What were those people I saw the other night? Why was I someone else?" And she used to sort of fob it off. She wouldn't. I said, "You were dreaming." I'd say, "It wasn't a dream." Well, this stayed with me. Stayed with me. To cut a long story short, when I was about seventeen, I was reading um, Jean Plady's "The Rise and Fall of the Spanish Inquisition." And they opened to one part, and there were these characters with black hoods on. Like the um, Ku Klux Klan, but dressed in black, and the hoods were much, much taller. And I said, that's what I saw that night. I said, that's who I saw. My mum said, I know you did. And so I said, well, why didn't you tell me? She said, it wasn't the only time you ever saw them. She said, you carried on seeing them on and off until you were nine years old. Because she said, hey, you're rummaging around your room. She said, I didn't know what was going on. She said, the middle of the night, always, uh, she didn't say what time it was, but she said, she came into the room. She said, you'd have taken your pyjamas off, bare naked, staring at the window. And she said, it was always the same thing. She said, I'd say, get back into bed. Come on, get back to bed. I'd turn around. She said, I could tell that you were totally asleep. She said, your eyes would be uh, In another world. In another world. And I'd say to her, I'm just looking at the idiots walking up and down with the black hoods. Now, that's why I believe in reincarnation. There were other things that happened, which were just... I was actually can remember being surprised that 
other people didn't think that they were there before. But as my mum has said to me at that time when I first said to her, she said, how was I supposed to explain to a child, she said, who's being brought up as a Catholic, what you were seeing happened 400 years ago? Or that, um, and one warning, one warning, I got regressed. Uh, many years later, mm -hmm. I got regressed. And I wouldn't advise it to anyone. Well, it was a horrible, it, let's, it gave me the fright of my life when it was regressed. But yeah, that's why can get you can feel awful when think when you when you go back into into past lives and things yeah i've been i i believe that i had my head chopped off as an a as a witch so mm. you know, i remember that one and you know i i i and i i think i think we've got a lot in common on with regards to this sort of yeah um, it's that's it but i tell you what lauren i always say to people i, I hope when it, get off to the other side, that they say, no, from now on, it's paradise. There's no going back down there. Oh my Here's God. all your doggies. I don't want to live here. I, 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 I can't come back. I've oh, already, I, I'm not already come to. back about a hundred times. Yeah. You know, well, I've I've got another, you know, got it, it, this mark this moment, but, you know, 50 more years, I, but no. time flies by so yeah. quickly. I won't be surprised when that happens because only last week it was Tuesday, and now it's the end of the week. So yeah, Christmas in five days. You know, it's so the world is moving really weirdly and really oh, strangely very strange. now. It's really weird, and I just think, what what am I? You know, fifth. What am I going to be like in fifty years? I'll be my mother. Well, that's not a bad thing, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> so it's a lovely thing to be. We look. The, we are very really similar. And yeah. uh, you know, and and I'll be my mother, and she'll be with us because we don't believe in age anyway. Um, yeah. We just believe you've got to keep your 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 limbs what good so that you can walk mm -hmm. around. As long as you keep your limbs yeah. around, you'll be fine. Uh, but I am, um, as I say, I've got me complaining before I even get up there, saying I am sticking my heels in. I'm not coming back down. I want all me dogs and cats back. I said I want to live with them for eternity in paradise. And I'm not coming back. I'm refusing to. No. No. But somehow I think it's a case of, isn't it? They'll just say, when you're walking along, there we are, there you go. No, and, I think uh, they make yeah. you feel so wonderful that you forget. Yeah. That's not yeah, going to happen. I know. But do you feel guilty, Lauren? This is what I do. And I keep on having to say, so stop complaining, stop complaining. No way to go on like this. Because I've always said, I've always had the feeling that never wants to be born or uh, came down. And that's what came up in this um, hypnosis, if it was correct, what I was saying. It was like, I came down out a sense of guilt and duty. I didn't want to come down. And I feel really bad and have to keep on telling myself off when I start moaning about life and saying this, that and the other. I say, my God, I could have been born somewhere where I was hungry, having to look for food, where serious abuse could have been on the cards i could have been born with all sorts and yet and i feel guilty i always feel guilty for complaining about it i think no i should be thankful i've had it good i've had it brilliant i've had it wonderful compared to you know what some other people have i feel like i'm going to be i'm going to be told off for that when i get over there you weren't you weren't thankful enough for the good things you had, but I'm going to be. Well, I, don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens, Anne. Yeah, let's hope we, that's it. We, let's hope we, you know, I want there to be, if I want, if I, if I have a partner then and he's not with me, I want to have um mostly man with bow ties and boxer shorts all, all, yeah. all over him with wings. <laughs> yeah, with and wings. Then, um, they just do permanently what I say. So yeah. if I say, you know, well, you know, let's have some oil, then they do what yeah. I say. <laughs> well, if you carry on being a good girl, you'll get that. You will, you'll definitely get us. But well, anyway, Lauren... not, I don't look anymore, and I, I, um, yeah. I, I've decided this is my 45th year on this world, and um, this is the first time I've ever been seen without makeup in my life, yeah. so. It, uh, uh, but it's my 45th year and I made a uh, New Year's resolution that I wasn't going to live for a man in my life. I was going to live for myself yeah. and, uh, and and let, and let things be the way they, you know, don't let them, for all my advice for these young girls who think having a man is the most important thing in the world, it isn't. Oh. Um, no, but, but it will happen when you're not expecting yeah. it. 
I know That's people it. say it and you never believe them, but I mean, you know, but as long as you don't think about it, I mean, in the north, yeah. that's all they talk about is when mm. you when you're going to get married, when you're going to adopt a child, and you know, you think no, no let it happen well, when you you know work on a career and work on a book or work on your own work because yeah. that's what, you know that 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 will all the other things will happen when that when you're good and ready. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I just say when people start, I say I always say to people you know about especially when start asking about relationships or anything like that i turn around and say well none of your business I, I won't talk about it but also i say to myself look i'm just that can be that selfish it wouldn't be easy being in it to me it would have to be a visiting relationship i wouldn't be bothered with all this you know someone living with me and all that drive me mad i'd be like no i can't have that, you're that business but um what I'll do, Lauren, I'll start winding it up now. So any, and this is true, wise words from Lauren. As I say, Lauren, you're a very, you are an old soul. You are an old soul. That's it. Got a lot of wise words to say. And I definitely 100% am going to be eager to read the book. But any last words you want to um, say to the viewers? Well, to all the viewers, you know, um, and to you, Anne, thank you for having me on the show. Oh, and thank uh, thanks to, um, thanks for all my fans, for my stars, I call them, because they've always been very supportive of me. Mm. Um, but, um, you know, it, you know, that we're living in a very complex world and we're all told so many things about what we're supposed to believe in. But what we have to believe in is what we, we believe in ourselves. Mm. When we're told something, it might not not necessarily be true. It mm. might be a lie. You know, there's not not everything you hear now is the truth. You know, yeah. we, we you know there, there's a huge, uh, huge. There's so many things going on that we're so people are so busy they don't even notice that are going on right now. So, you know, we we remember we 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 not don't don't let anyone anyone put you down. And don't let anyone treat you like you're stupid mm. because nobody's stupid. They're just unaware. And if you've made mistakes in the past and you feel like that you've upset someone, then make it better and you'll feel better and always treat people as you would like to be treated. And never yeah. think about an interview without makeup on. Ever again. Oh, oh you done. Lord. I'm telling you now, and I'm not just saying this to be nice. I'm telling you, this absolute, I wish I, I say, looked. You've got absolutely gorgeous eyes. You have absolutely stunning eyes. I mean, I wish I looked like that without makeup on. My God, if you saw me, it's just like a fright now. I frighten myself. Well, and, and your, your, your bonnet never looks the side, the right size on, to, on either. You've got to make it twice the size when you put yeah. it on. Well, it's... But, You've got beautiful bone structure. There's nothing wrong with you without makeup on. Honestly, there isn't. Thank but anyway, I'll say good night. And Lord and Allah, if you'll have to grace me sometime in the future with another. Yes, definitely. You must come on my YouTube show when I I'm will do. Mine on. And I um, and I'll let you know about the book. We'll keep in contact. We will. And if do. anybody wants to message me or they want, you know, they can always email. My mother, who's my agent, on to kate at mail dot com. Yeah. Um. And um. And remember, you know, the the there's all if the, the, if they've got the worst thoughts, they will drift away, and there'll be mm. another thought. Just remember, yeah. so never take your thought too seriously, because uh, you know that's when you get into trouble, and you don't yeah. want that. Yeah. Okay. So definitely. it's been wonderful, and. And, um, and and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and um, light and love to you, Anne, and to everyone. Oh, thank you, Lauren. God bless. And I say, take care. And I look forward to talking to you again. And thank you to everyone in the chat. 